Right, hello YouTube. My new transistors have arrived, so I can now show you a new operational circuit, which is in danger of vibrating itself to death. Right. Crikey, that's bad. I'm gonna have to rebuild this clearly. Anywho, let me explain what's going on. Two more coils. This one and this one here. Uh, this is a very widely wound coil and this is a very tightly wound coil. See, it's very small and that one's very big. Just to see which is, which is better. Um, whether a smaller path works with these magnets or whether a, a larger path works better. Um, I haven't bothered to, to check that yet. But basically, I've only just finished building it. So, we have the cap for this coil with its rectifier. Okay, so the, uh, the coil wires lead into the, to the bridge rectifier, down into the cap, which is then linked to this cap and this cap. Okay, now the center cap links to the three phase rectification system that has six diodes um, to give me the most efficient rectification for the 24 interior coils and then there's this coil as well which also has its bridge rectifier linked into the capacitor okay which is also connected to all of these capacitors okay so stand your back up there you go right this is just a standard motor the kind of thing you'd find in a uh, Skelextrix car stuff like that really small you know it's it's only the size of my thumb, it's tiny. Okay, now let me give you a quick measurement of what is in these caps. Now because they're all linked together, they all um, they all have the same potential. Okay, so each one registers the same. Okay, we are getting 4.42 volts. 4.42 and 4.42 so that's energy just sat in there now watch what happens when I attach the motor this little one across this cap you will find that um, the bedini will slow but it will spin see it's only enough to drive it for a short amount of time this motor. See the Bedini has slowed down so much now that I'm actually taking this power from it. And while it's if I leave it connected it will occasionally twitch, but it's not got the power to run it. So I take it back off and the Bedini speeds right back up again. We'll have a look what's in the caps 380 volts 390 volts climbing up going back up to 4 volts again so obviously this mm, mm, actually that's unusual this motor I'm using has two little at least I think they're resistors. There and there. If I take them off, then maybe I'll uh, have better luck. I'm not sure. But anyway, if I put a bulb on there, I'm sure I'd be able to run a, you know, a bulb off this power I'm taking. Um, quick look at the voltages and the batteries. I think is is due. My primary is running at 12.32 and my secondary is at 12.03. Now 
both of these coils have cores the same as my first coil which is cores made of just nails just a load of nails jammed in there to make a nice core and it does work I'm not gonna rant and rave about it being excellent or anything but it does the job um, and they do you know because as the magnets passing over inducing current in these two coils it is uh, wearing on the motor so I've currently got a lot of vibration problems I'm gonna have to uh, consider a more permanent mounting all tape and blue tacks and glue's good, but it's not. It's not brilliant. I'm getting ooh, up to four mil of wobble here. This is not. Still though, my generators are working. They are working. So, yeah. So, using these coils and three more that I can estimate that I can fit, then I can generate more power. I'm getting four volts here, uh, another three, maybe double that, never know. And then building another generator coming up from the axle here like KT Service Corp's windmill type three phase design would also increase the energy extracted so yeah that's it for now I'm gonna really start tinkering with this now and see what I can achieve and what kind of real real time run times we can get you know maybe hook this cap up to the second hook these caps up to the second battery and maybe get some extra charge. Alright that's me out for now.